Hello teabags, Forbidden Thumbnail here, and welcome back to the biggest tea party on YouTube. What a nice array of guests we have today. Eugenia. Pro Anna. Butterfly, this blue butterfly. Is Empress's mom and she's reversed. Period poo, you can't change the stars. Oh, I love this community. This video here was actually supposed to be the second and last video in the Eugenia Cooney series. I know we got sidetracked a little bit. In fact, Bell uploaded a second response video to me. I will not be going over it. What can I say that hasn't already been said by so many others? But if you are really curious, I did appear on Xylee's stream. Make what I say make no sense. I dare you to challenge what I just said there. But you can't- listen, listen, Willie, here- Challenge what I said, it makes tons of sense, that's crazy, dog. <laughs> that will be linked in the description if you want to check it out. She does a good job. But there was one part of Belle's new video that caught my attention. The truth is, there is a massive cover-up going on in Eugenia's community that culminated in an event last week that her and her mods are desperately trying to keep hidden. Now, this event actually relates to multiple minors being groomed in her community, and even though I wanted to be done speaking about this, after looking into it and after getting all of the evidence, I realized that no one else is going to speak up for this 16-year-old girl, and so I will. Guys, she's on the hinge. She's never even asked Eugenia about this. When you hear how disgustingly Eugenia and her mods handled this situation between the minor and the predator, who also happens to be a huge financial contributor to Eugenia's Twitch streams, you'll start to understand why I was suddenly attacked completely out of nowhere. I'm gonna repeat this one last time. I don't have any hatred or malice or ill intent towards Eugenia Cooney at all. Despite what Willie Mac and other creators are trying to make it seem like, I actually don't hate her. Belle, if you actually think Eugenia Cooney is trafficking minors in her Twitch chat to sell the predators for Twitch bits, it's okay to hate her then. If that was true at all, I would hate her too. How is Belle a real person, dude? I would also like to apologize. It would be very hypocritical of me not to own up when I'm in the wrong. I should not have labeled Belle as a T-channel. That is an insult to all T-channels out there. She is clearly a conspiracy theorist, much like Alex Jones. She just screams less. Ah! This is good. Do more of this, Bell. Now that we're done with that, I want to bring the conversation back to my first video. There's a group of T-channels out there that have spent the last year villainizing Eugenia Cooney, spreading lies about her family, boogeymanning her content, and unironically making up conspiracies about her underwear. Yes, and their evidence for that was tarot cards and blue butterfly emojis. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I uploaded a 40-minute video breaking down just how far some of these T-channels were willing to go to slander a girl with an eating disorder. See the fan art of you on the beach with your mom. I did. And to nobody's surprise, rather than owning up and apologizing to the misinformation they put out, the T-channels decided to double down, one lighting her channel on fire in the process. Pride's a bitch. But what did surprise me was they started framing Eugenia Cooney as the equivalent of Jeffrey Epstein. These people will go with anything to avoid accountability. So stick around, cause this gets pathetic. First things first though, I want to address the comments thinking that I didn't do my research. What a lot of people had a problem with was my timeline of the 5150 and the inclusion of Katie Morton. So let me get this straight, another one of Eugenia's friends complimented me for the accuracy of my timeline. No, your video is incredible. Like, thank God, like there's someone out here actually like being logical and saying the actual truth. Eugenia Cooney herself has since praised me for the accuracy of my timeline. I did see the Willie Mac video that he made about me. And honestly, I thought it was a really, really good video. I just really appreciate the fact that like, there's someone out there that will look at things from like a different stance. And you know, I just thought he did a really, really good job just kind of like showing things in such a more like accurate, like truthful way. Oh, but the YouTube comment section, they somehow know more than everyone. The timeline I gave between Katie Morton, Jacqueline Glenn, and the 5150 was simple, straightforward, and only contained essential information. Let me remind you, this video was about the T-channels and the ridiculous narratives they made up about this girl. Not Jacqueline Glenn, not Katie Morton. I was simply giving necessary background information. The information these comments think I don't know about is inconclusive at best and completely speculative. Yet they say, I don't believe her mother signed her up for anything. Eugenia later contradicts herself on this situation. Literally, her mother did help sign her up. Nobody argues with that. Jacqueline Glenn doesn't even argue with that. This person is just making shit up. Katie Morton helped Jacqueline Glenn do the research much. A lot of people pointed to this as if it was a way to disprove my order of events. Let's recap. It's 2019. Eugenia Cooney is at an all-time low with her eating disorder. Jacqueline Glenn, who was friends with Eugenia Cooney, was worried about her. So she decided to trick her out of the house by saying they were going to an escape room, when in reality, it was a plan to 5150 her. I did lie to her. I I lied to her. We all kind of did. Now there's a few problems with this. One is that Jacqueline never expressed obvious concern to Eugenia. That's coming from Jacqueline herself. She also used a lot of the same verbiage to us when we were meeting with her, saying, uh, why didn't you guys ever express this to me more strongly before? 
she did say that it seemed like we didn't care before, but that it, that we, we tried. We were very delicately trying to bring things up because we were fearful that her mother would never let her hang out with us. This was literally the first time that any of those people ever brought any kind of concerns up to me. I actually think like, actually now I'm like thinking back, there was like one time, maybe mm -hmm. like a couple of years ago where two of them like texted me like one thing. The second problem being is if Jacqueline isn't communicating with Eugenia's mom because she doesn't trust the mom, and at the same time she isn't expressing obvious concern to Eugenia because maybe they aren't that close of friends to begin with. We were kind of friends at the time we weren't really like as close, I guess, as they <laughs> would kind of make things into later. Think about it. Because she didn't talk to anybody, Jacqueline had no way of knowing Eugenia was already planning to get treatment before the 5150 took place. I actually just talked to my mom this morning. Um, I do have plans to like go see a doctor. Um, and like, I didn't know exactly when they were going home. You know, I asked my mom about yeah. it. She was like, no, I was planning on flying you home sooner. 5150s aren't usually seen as all that effective in terms of helping someone with an eating disorder. Because even if you do get them committed, legally, they are able to just leave after 72 hours. They have to want to be there. Katie Morton, a licensed therapist, explains how it can often do more harm than good. You can't force anyone into treatment because exactly. you can't make them get better. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, you, you're the one that has to do the work mm -hmm. and you're the one that has to be there. If we've been 5150'd against our will, um, for eating disorder reasons, we're in with everybody. This is why a lot of you have told me that 5150s for you have been more detrimental than actually beneficial to oh, treatment yeah. um, because it's like traumatizing in and of itself and you don't have any rights and it can feel very totally it's disempowering i guess is the best way i completely agree remember 5150s are not usually used to rehabilitate eating disorders you go to a mental hospital not an eating disorder treatment center to qualify for those you usually need to be recommended by a doctor and now that i've caught you up this brings us to the crux of the criticism i think you missed the part of the 5150 drama where jacqueline exposed that katie helped trick eugenia into it some valid criticisms but you can't ignore that katie was literally the one who suggested the 5150 to jacqueline sir i would just like to inform you that Katie Morton was literally the one who told Jacqueline to 5150 Eugenia. You can find the emails posted online. Guys, you really don't think I know about this? Would I ever let you down? The reason my timeline stops where it does is because everything after becomes largely based on speculation and is unrelated to the story I was telling. Let me show you. Jacqueline was getting some heat on whether the decision to 5150 Eugenia was right. The decision to have a friend committed and then to talk about it, at this point, are both being called into question. I'm now viewed as like a bully. We're bullies, I don't... The solution? Well, blame Katie Morton. The only thing that I could do, and this was discussed with Katie in emails, so she knows who I am. She knows what we were planning on. Her defense was that Katie Morton advised her to do it. She tweeted, Hey Katie Morton, just saw your vid with Eugenia. Thanks for walking me through what to do step by step. Without you, I wouldn't even know what a 5150 was. She shows two emails from Katie Morton, and I was able to find another from Jacqueline Glenn. This is the order of the emails, but we are unsure how many take place before or after this one. We also know that these two emails are directly responding to each other and possibly the end of the email chain. Is this confusing enough for you? Do you see why this didn't make it in my video? But here's the real kicker. Katie Morton never directly tells Jacqueline Glenn to 5150 Eugenia. So all these YouTube comments telling me I was missing a crucial part of this story can now have their minds blown. We don't know what Jacqueline says in this first email, but Katie responds, thanks for reaching out. I'm happy to hop in a call tomorrow if that works for you. Unfortunately, we have no way of knowing what was said in the call, but she says, unfortunately, we can't make anyone get help. But if she does have a therapist or a doctor, they could 5150 her. Happy to talk it out with you. I'm sorry this is happening. I know it's really hard to watch and not do anything. She's telling Jacqueline to take her to a doctor. That's it. Let professionals handle it. We don't know what was said directly after this email, but the next one we got is from Jacqueline. This is a long one, so I'm going to break it down. The first part is Jacqueline responding about an ED treatment center that Katie must have recommended. Jacqueline says, but they do require a doctor's appointment before taking anyone or interviewing them. So I'd have to find a way to do that, which is difficult since she's not responding to text. Most ED treatment centers won't take you unless you see a doctor beforehand. 5150s don't count towards that as far as I know, which is why Eugene and her mom had to set up an appointment with a doctor before she went to treatment. I actually just talked to my mom this morning. Um, I do have plans to like go see a doctor. This next chunk is just about how the police can't do anything. She then says, my only thing at this point is to get her out of the house and call pet. It's like the mental health police to whatever location I'm at with her. Gonna keep texting and inviting her to things until she goes. Jacqueline then blames the mom and thanks Katie. Katie responds directly to this message saying, thanks for the update. I agree that the best next move is to just get her out of the house and with you so that you can call the pet team or get her to see a doctor, whatever she will be open to. I take this as you actually need to talk to her dude, not trick her into 
a 4v1 trap to have her committed to a psych ward that probably won't even help her. And even if you do somehow interpret this as Katie fully telling Jacqueline to 5150 Eugenia, remember Jacqueline, the person feeding Katie the information on Eugenia knows nothing about her family or that she was already planning on getting treatment. Yet for some reason, she's taking full control of this situation. Now, this doesn't mean that Katie never advised Jacqueline to 5150 Eugenia. Maybe it was said during a phone call or in other emails that weren't leaked. Remember, this is all interpretation and speculation on all sides. That's why I didn't go into this in my first video. I wanted to stick to the facts. Now, I'm not saying that Jacqueline's a bad guy. I think she's a concerned friend that panicked and probably didn't make the most educated decision. And then when caught in a mess, decided to blame Katie Morton for it. We all need to acknowledge that the most likely timeline is that nobody is lying. Jacqueline might have misinterpreted what Katie was saying in these emails. Odds are Jacqueline felt like she was doing the right thing. Just like how I don't think Katie's a bad guy just because she gave some off the record advice to Jacqueline or is friends with Shane Dawson or was invested in better help. Honestly, these criticisms of Katie have been blown way out of proportion by Jacqueline Glenn and Eugenia's detractors for no other reason than to save face. Now, does any of this information relate to the story that I was trying to tell? Not really, but it does show how mixed up and twisted these narratives get when misreported for so long. The audience is confident enough to correct me when what they're saying isn't factual in the slightest. If you watch my Gabby Hanna series, you will notice that the exact same thing happened there. This occurs because the story was never correctly reported in the first place. The same misinformation is reported over and over again until it becomes the truth. Since I've been covering T-Channels, accountability has become a major theme. You see, we got this whole community of people whose job it is to report on other people's mistakes, holding people accountable. Regardless of what Gabby Hanna says at this point, what she said was a lie. It was all a misunderstanding. This is yet yeah, another lie, and it's just so blatant. She also deserves to be called out, and she deserves to be held accountable. In the case of Belle Aubrey or Angelica Oles, they built entire channels off of holding people accountable. But when they're criticized and they're held accountable for their own shitty behavior, they don't own it like they demand of so many others. Instead, they change the subject and shift blame. Angelica Oles, instead of just apologizing for her mishandling of the Gabby Hanna Bianca Devin story, decided to point to Turkey Tom's questionable Bianca Devin's video and how we should go after him him instead. Now, unlike Angelica, Tom immediately apologized and took down his video. But even if he didn't, would that make what you did any better? No, of course not. You'd still be an asshole. Pastel Bell was the queen of this shit. When I held her accountable for the lies and conspiracies she made up about Eugenia's family, friends, and content, instead of owning up, she decided to simp for D'Angelo Wallace. D'Angelo Wallace, biggest douchebag on the internet? Do you realize how stupid that sounds? Oh, sorry. Did I take the Lord's name in vain? Did I miss the part where he died for her sins? A lot of people disagreed with my D'Angelo Wallace video, but even if it was the worst video on the internet, does it make what you did okay? No, of course not. Get Gabby Hanna is not a serious issue. Yes, Gabby Hanna is a serious issue. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Do some research for once, please. But unlike Angelica Oles or Pastel Bell, there's only one character that has appeared through both T-Channel sagas, and it's none other than her favorite positivity turtle himself, Repzilla. In both instances, Repzilla, when called out, initially shifted blame. In the Gabby Hanna situation, Repzilla was quick to criticize Gabby for her e-girl inspirational video, saying she was disrespecting the dead. She's done something that's made a lot of people upset, and and when I saw it, it really upset me. It was very disrespectful. Mm. The disrespectful thing that Gabby did was compliment a t-shirt that Bianca Devins was wearing. She didn't realize when looking through this article about e-girls, there's this small paragraph talking about Bianca Devins' death. This outfit right here is you already straight wear. up what I wore from seventh grade to college. And now. And now. <laughs> I do have that shirt. Now remember, this article is about e-girls. It makes sense that she could miss this one offhanded paragraph about this tragedy, especially since she was just looking at the pictures. But when Repzilla reported on this, suddenly Gabby was pulling up a murder article. Article. Look how insensitive Gabby is for pulling up murder articles for her fashion video. I mean, she has a legitimate murder article. Um, she's pulling it up as examples for a video. The disrespect was on another level. And as she's talking, she's talking all in this upbeat voice and she's showing this uh, recently deceased uh, young girl. And in the article, it talks about the horrendous murder. Gabby, who felt awful about somebody's dead daughter being brought up for YouTube drama, apologized, even though she shouldn't have, just so these T-channels would drop it and leave it alone. And what did these T-channels do in response? Well, they acted like heroes, cause they got an apology. I said that I wanted to see just two things. I wanted to see an apology, and I would like to see her remove the clip from her video. And what we got was an apology and I believe she took the video completely down. That's what uh, 
That's what I wanted to see. Pat yourself on the back. You held someone accountable for something they didn't do wrong. In fact, Bianca's family saw how ridiculous this was, said Gabby didn't need to apologize, and that it was the drama channel's fault for turning nothing into a big deal. We are here because there has been so much controversy and drama over the Gabby Hanna video where she used Bianca's picture. Um, we just want to say that we were not offended by it at oh. all. No one should be offended. No one should be. All these drama channels that are you know, using Bianca for clout, it's absolutely ridiculous that's because that's all you're doing. We are offended about and you guys also should be. Yeah. Not you know. about Gabby Hanna complimenting her shirt. Did Repzilla see this video, realize he's in the wrong, and then apologize to Gabby? No, of course not. He ignored it. When Gabby had enough and finally chose to stand up for herself a year later. How is somebody supposed to act when they're being falsely accused of exploiting a murdered child. Bianca's mom in full support tweeting, do I want public apologies? No, but Gabby deserves the apologies for being attacked after I put out I wasn't offended. So Repzilla was clearly in the wrong when it comes to this situation. No doubt about it. So did he finally apologize when he saw the mom's tweet? No, instead he said, I removed my earlier tweets about the Gabby Hanna situation out of respect for Kim Devins and her family. I don't want to contribute or perpetuate negativity in any way. I love how this dude's all about the drama, but as soon as it starts to turn on him, it becomes perpetuating negativity. Very convenient. I fully believe that both sides are in the wrong and would encourage others to take this route. Both sides are not in the wrong here. The mother didn't do anything wrong here. Gabby didn't do anything wrong here. You did, so stop making excuses for yourself. This is very painful. With Eugenia Cooney, Repzilla was quick to jump on the pro-Anna allegations. He famously contributed to the Blue Butterfly narrative. She's become somewhat of a YouTube villain. And some of the things she does just seems too much of a coincidence, like posting captions with a blue butterfly. Now, as I've said before, the blue butterfly does have some pro-Anna connections, but it's also the only butterfly emote on iPhone. Eugenia defended herself saying that she doesn't mean anything bad by it and that she just likes butterflies. It shows how out of control these conspiracies got. My favorite was the makeup bin conspiracy that Repzilla pushed. The makeup bin is something Eugenia would take out once a day to do her makeup. She would then put it away once she started streaming because she didn't like the way it looked in the camera. Makes sense, right? Repzilla sees this and makes a whole compilation saying saying that Eugenia is moving this box to sell her body for Twitch donations. Bro, you can't make this up. Except you can, cause he literally does it. And I feel like at this point, with the content that she's currently coming out with, this needs to be an age restricted channel. It is clear to me that the only thing that this channel is, how do I say this about bleeping all these words? This is Eugenia Hub. What? All she did was move a bin. Like, what's wrong with this guy? Several of the donations she got were only a dollar. In one of the examples he shows, she doesn't even get a donation. And not a single one of the donations made talked about her moving the bin at all. Why? Because it's a fucking bin. There's nothing there. I've watched a lot of Eugenia stream. She is always getting donations. This is just such a bad faith reach. I guess the criticism worked, though, because Eugenia stopped using the makeup bin. Great job, man. You saved the children. And when people like me and Tipster started criticizing Repzilla for this, this. Did he own up and apologize for it? No, of course not. He shifts blame to avoid criticism, just like every other T channel we've talked about. Critics that can't take criticism. There has been so much terrible behavior from Eugenia. The comments about survivors, the allowing child predators in her now deleted Discord server. The list could go on, but they don't talk about that. We do. He goes on and on about this Discord predator stuff as if this already hasn't been resolved. She knew he was a convicted felon. He was open about it in Discord. She had to be pressured to remove the guy and was left no choice when his records were posted publicly on the server after three days. Yeah, horrible if true, but Edwin responded with, Bro, don't go down this route again. We went through this last year. She was not pressured. She was just not around on Discord at the time, and as soon as she learned about who he was, she took care of it. Eugenia also deleted her Discord, so nothing like this could ever happen again. She handled it well, in my opinion. Here's the ironic part. He's bringing up something that she's already taken accountability for. She deleted her Discord upon hearing the criticism. She's gone above and beyond. Meanwhile, what has Repzilla done when he gets criticized? He shifts blame, bringing up old, already resolved issues that are unrelated to the conversation at hand. He then de derails the dialogue and moves the goalpost. Now I want to give Rubzilla some credit when discussing his conspiracies, unlike Pastel Bell, he at least admits that they might not be 100% true. Like I said, you, there, there's no way that I can connect it 
uh, directly at all. It reminds me of when Belle said she doesn't hate Eugenia, even though she basically accused her of being Jeffrey Epstein. It's like, come on, dudes. You guys are only saying that to cover your ass. It doesn't make any of the bullshit you push any less harmful, but thanks for the sentiment, I guess. I'm sure Eugenia really appreciates it. But Rebzilla has since taken down his Gabby Hanna videos, as well as his Eugenia Cooney videos. He did eventually apologize to her too. I want to remind everybody that the whole point of this Eugenia Cooney saga was to get an apology. Apologize to Eugenia Cooney. And unlike Bell who doubled down or Sloan who just ignored it, Repzilla did eventually own it. Repzilla, even though he made it as painful as possible, did eventually own up. The dudes apologized and at the end of the day, that's all he can really do. I'm just not the kind of person to dig up old drama and, and move the goalpost, especially when somebody's already dealt with it. But boy, was he sure not willing to give Eugenia that same courtesy. I can't help but wonder is that if these tweets worked and distracted people from the criticisms at hand, would we have still gotten this apology from him? Only he can say. Now I have talked to Bell and Repzilla and I can wholeheartedly tell you that Rep seems like a fairly normal person. I have faith that he can wake up every morning, put on his pants, turn on and off the stove. Bell, on the other hand, I wouldn't leave in the same room as a toaster. I think Repzilla's main problem is that he sees other people make popular videos and instead of critically thinking about it or double checking their work, he just jumps on the bandwagon. He cited Bell as a source. If you're making videos talking about other people's lives, give a shit. It's your fucking job, man. This isn't dream cheating in Minecraft or John Swan lying. These are heavy allegations being pushed. Make sure you bring receipts. Point is, suck my tea bags, everyone. I'm the number one tea sale. I'm not going anywhere. I got C's in high school and you people make me look like a genius because I read and have basic comprehension skills. This stuff is so easy. Shout out to the tea bags on Patreon. Drop Z, broke wing. Anonymity, Hellison, Nebulous Shooter, Phoebes, Crimson Glass, and the Mega Tea Bags, Reynolds Hughes, Marissa Lynn, IGP, Nesquik, Bald Boy Ajax, Yuri Kanapog, Cone, Jason Johnson, George is Lost, and Zombie Fox. I can't thank you guys enough. These people allow me to make the videos I want to make without having to worry about YouTube's arbitrary monetization. I have another video planned this week, so stick around. We have a lot of fun around here. We're almost to 100k, dude. We're we're this close. We're this close. Follow me on Twitter. And as always, till next time. We've been drinking till we're not sure that we'll be all right. So we're worried that one of us might not make it through the night. But I'm over it, I'm over now. It was fun when I was younger, but now I got a path to choose. To either clean up and get down and fuck up and do not. Cause playing music's all I really know how to do. Pubs in the kitchen and mold in the sink. Chugging down the whiskey, you'll never stop to think. What do we do tomorrow?